Hi, I'm Stephanie Rosso. Welcome to Nature's Coach Creates Gray Wolf Go Out and Sketch instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch the gray wolf by applying what you learned in your step-by-step -step lesson. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you sketch. You can sketch at a zoo, a wildlife park, or even from an HD video at home. Today, I'm sketching from a composite video of a gray wolf for demonstrative purposes. Remember, this is just a sketch. It should be relaxing and fun, so take your time and don't get too caught up with the details. So you can just use some basic shapes to draw the wolf onto your page. And just use what you learn from your step-by-step. -step. And you can refer to the image to help you out as well. So I'm gonna draw, the head is in a, basically the same position as our step-by-step -step in my video. I'm gonna draw in the head a little bit just to give an idea of where it's gonna be. So this is more placement on the page than anything else. So I'm using some very light rough marks, drawing some simple shapes to map all of that in. Just kind of adding more shapes. And I know that if I draw it about the same size as this, it'll fit on the page really well. So I keep the head in that big, same basic size. So really rough, just kind of sketchy lines and shapes to get an idea of where this animal should be on the page. and the length of the legs and the size of the head and different things might change. It just gives you an idea. So you can even just draw lines. You don't even have to draw full shapes. And then you'll want to go ahead and start adding in some of the details. So you can start with, I'm gonna start with this line between the eyes then head down with the line towards the nose. And I'm not gonna get a lot of the details like the nose in. I'm just going to try to get the shapes laid out. So I get the basic sizing right. And I'll use this as my main starting point. So I'll make adjustments to the whole thing based on this size. And then there is the side of the head. Maybe a triangle for the ear just to give an idea. I'm not gonna get the actual ear in there yet. And then a line indicating from one ear to the other. Some of that sizing here might be off, so I can still adjust it, making the ear bigger, adjusting some of these angles here, maybe making the snout and muzzle this area a little bit smaller. Adding and then starting to add in the nose. And you don't want to add too much detail just in case you want to change something. A little eye in there. I here I'm 
and drawing in some of the direction of the fur and where some of the patterns on the face are. Try not to get too detailed or too carried away, but having some of those in might help with eye placement and for uh, if the animal moves to be able to add anything in. And this mimics your step-by-step -step transfer. You can transfer the image, and if it's easier to do from a non-moving image, you can do that. Um, but it's good to try to do it from a moving image as well. The more you do it, the better you will get at it. And you can do this. And then you can start by just drawing from my reference video, if that helps. It's always nice to just kind of sit out and do drawings of animals in person, though. It's a lot more fun in person. And it's okay if they don't turn out great. It's just more the act of getting out there and doing it. So these eyes turned out a little bit weird. Sometimes that happens. And I might just erase this eye because I don't really like the where it is. Add in a few other things. And then use this ear to kind of give me an idea of where this eye should be in this eye. The relation of the two eyes is important as well. And I'm using darker marks as I get more detailed. And I'm spending quite a bit too much time on the head here. So I'm gonna move on. the rest of the body and I'll base the size of everything else on the head. So I'll adjust the size of the body and I'm going to work out in shapes and trying to keep that hair direction, adding that in as I draw the shapes out. So I'm doing the half circle instead of doing a line, I'm drawing just kind of a bunch of little hair lines because if this animal moves, if you're doing it from an in-person animal, once it moves, you're not going to know quite as well what to do. So if it gives you an opportunity to add it in now, it's better to do that. And when you're drawing the different parts, you just want to think about each part in relation to the other part and the size in relation to the other size. And try to think of it as seeing as shapes, like different shapes throughout will make it easier to get the right thing, but it will take time and practice to get the right thing. And you can look at kind of angles. So this this is a little bit off. It's supposed to be a little bit closer. So I'll start just making an adjustment there. Making sure the leg's in the right spot. And there's a shape right in here an empty space here and if you get that space about the same that will give you the right sizing and if this lines are getting a little confusing to me so I'm just going to erase them yeah a few things wrong that's fine just make sure you don't spend too much time erasing it's about getting this image quickly onto the page. 
And when you're doing it from a video like I am, it's easy to get carried away. With corrections. I'm gonna be a little bit lower. rough shapes rather than the detailed shapes first off. And then it, the two feet in relation to each other. Just thinking of the foot as a shape rather than actually putting the foot in and then adding the toes real quick. Add the nails because I can see them in this video, but I think I'll just kind of leave them out. Just getting a quick representation of this animal, I'll try not to get too carried away. If it, it's good practice for just kind of showing as if you were out drawing this animal in real life, I'm trying to help you figure that out. In real life, you wouldn't have too much time to do it all. It might also help to warm up and draw the animal just really, really roughly, making lots of mistakes before you do a nice drawing. This kind of sketch, so just really, really rough. It's called a gesture sketch. And doing that could help make it easier for you to actually draw when you're ready. And doing your step-by-step -step kind of helps you with that as well. But doing the gesture will give you even, make you even more prepared for drawing the animal. And if you want to do several sketches and several paintings, I'm sure you'll see that it will start to improve. the more practice you get. So I'm looking at the relation of these two parts of the leg. This is a little bit lower and it's a little bit higher, but they're in similar areas in relation to each other. Help me get that right. Just roughly get these in. And these toe pads look really silly. So I might just kind of readjust them. I think we'll both toe pads look a little, toes look a little bit weird anyway. Bring all this up a little bit. Adjust it just a little bit. I'm really close to a spot where this is just right where it's supposed to be. That looks pretty good to me. I've got most of the hair direction in. Maybe adjust just a couple of quick areas here to make sure. So I'm sectioning this out. If you're out sketching a live animal, you want to make sure you have things figured out as soon as possible. And you can always use your reference images or what you already know about a wolf to fill some things in. Or maybe you just focus on the parts you got in before it moved or disappeared because it went to somewhere else. But I think I, overall I like this. It's not perfect, but it's a good spot to be 
and I'm going to leave all those mistake lines and everything in there. I'm going to write in the common name. Oops. And the scientific name. For consistency, but this space around the animal is for your notes about your feelings or your thoughts or mistakes or like the maybe the sizing of something is off or the animal moved and you weren't able to complete it. Whatever you were thinking or feeling, you can put it on the outside here. Any questions you have about the wolf um, or what's going on that day or any noises you heard or any observations or thoughts. This white space is for you. So I'm gonna move on to adding some paint. So next I'm gonna add some paint. You can lighten some of these lines with your kneaded erasers. Make sure you find a clean spot. It's a light gray without any marks. You don't add anything you don't want to your page. But I like leaving all the marks. I think it's a nice stylistic look. And I'm gonna paint this the same way I painted the step-by-step -step wolf just for speed and I revived all of my paints so that I can use them and so I'm going to start with the wettest lightest wolf umber and dab it off on my towel maybe add a little bit more water dab it off again and test it out make sure it's not too dark really 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 light because the areas on this wolf that are lightly brown are pretty white at least in this video so got a very 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 low concentrated color so not a lot of paint pigment mostly just water and I'm not adding actually a lot of water to my page I'm just adding a lot of water in my palette and if there's areas that are really super white, I can leave those. But I'm just gonna take this color, like I did in the step-by-step, -step, and just pull it over the entire thing. And if it gets too dry in one spot, just go ahead and pick up some more. And since I'm going really light, I'm just gonna add a little bit more water. Dab it off on my towel. Dab it off on your towel, make sure you don't end up adding too much water to your page. You still add that light color that's not very concentrated and obviously I'm, this is a sketch I'm not worrying too much about exact location or staying inside those lines because we define those lines when we add the ink lines anyway so I'm going to dry off my brush let this dry and then add a little bit more paint so now I'm going to take the wettest lightest wolf purple yes I'm using a purple color to make this grays really pop it has a little bit of a grayish purple color to it as you can see it's kind of like a slate purple and I don't want to use anything too dark but just kind of something not too concentrated not too dark something kind of in between so once you get that color which I like you just kind of add it to the areas that are the darkest so this line between the eyes, maybe this shadow over here, picking up a little bit more. And this will help some of those dark, dark gray areas really stand out and pop. And bring a little more vibrancy to your overall image. And so this wolf obviously has different patterning than and even a little bit different size. I think it's a male based on size of its muzzle, but I am not sure. And so since this animal looks different, it's different patterning and different size, it's going to have different placement for the color. So I'm just adding it to wherever I see. Just real rough, not getting very exact. The basic spaces where there's some darker grays. Now, 
I can bring it down here on legs too, because why not? Let's make the mud look a little shiny too. It's not gonna really look shiny, it's just gonna make some of these colors consistently pop. I'm just gonna add a little bit through the hair on the mane, which I should have probably made a little bit bigger now looking at it. So I might just kind of bring some paint into there to kind of redefine where that should be. That looks a bit better because the mane is a little bit bigger than I originally drew it. And I'll bring it into this part of the leg. It's very dark. And there's some dark areas here. Just trying to also keep in a similar direction of the hair direction. Quickly placing it in there because if you were painting this animal live, you wouldn't get much time. So we can get it in. It's helpful to get in fast. And it does not have to be exact for that reason. You're just doing a sketch. Just kind of adding it in there. And I think that looks pretty good for that color. Next, I'm going to add this orangish color. Again, I'm not going to use a very highly concentrated color. It doesn't have a lot of paint pigment in it, mostly water, and that's all added in my palette. And then once I get that lower concentration in my palette, I can dab it off on my towel and test it on my paper before applying it. I like that, maybe a little bit light. So I'm gonna add just maybe a little bit more. It's okay, change your mind. That's better. I think there are some really bright spots on this wolf. So this is kind of where all those orange highlighty spots are on this wolf. So again, it's gonna be different than the wolf in your step-by-step. -step. It has the same basic colors, but the placement of those colors is gonna be different. And they don't need to be exact. This is just a sketch. So don't get too carried away with it. As you can see, I'm just kind of adding it in to get an idea of this animal more than anything else. Always dab your brush off onto your towel before applying it to your painting to make sure you don't get too much. And I'm just at looking at my wolf and seeing, seeing where the basic areas where the Kind of this darker orange color or brighter orange color and trying to leave some of this lighter color showing through. So a little bit of variation will give it some depth and look more realistic even though it's not very developed with too much detail. When you have that added, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. I think just a little bit to this area, the main that I added, just to add a little bit more. And if some of that's bigger than the area that's going to end up being in my image is fine because I'll just redefine all of that with my ink lines. So I'm cleaning up my brush. I'm going to let this dry and then add a little more paint. If you can work in dry areas while you wait for the other ones to dry, that is also helpful when you're sketching from a live animal. So next I'm going to add in a little bit of the wolf brown I'm 
And I'm gonna use something that's not really concentrated again, mostly has water to added to it in my palette, making it really wet and light. And I'm gonna add that over the purple areas. So I'm gonna just kind of add a little bit in there. Just deepening that in a bit. And anywhere I see some more brownish, darker brown, we'll add it there too. And this does not have to be exact. It's up to you as to exactly where you'd like to add it. And it should just be a quick addition of color. And each step just quickly getting some of that color in there. And I think I could even add just a little bit more, make sure it's not too dark, a little bit more throughout the body here of this brown because this wolf is pretty dark. And I'm trying to use a line motion to mimic the hair and doing it in the direction of the hair. That's why it's helpful to draw in some of those directions with the initial sketch there, the line sketch with your pencil. That way, if the animal is in a different position, you can go ahead and still get that in the right place. And this animal has lots of mud, and I can note that the bottom here, so its feet are going to be pretty dark. So again, the, put some purple down there, knowing that I was going to put the brown on top. And a little bit more, maybe right under the head to add a shadow. I didn't quite get that shadow in there. So you can see how that might be a little different from where the purple was. And I think that's about good for me as far as the color I want to add to this. I can, of course, keep working it up a bit more, but I want to keep this really simple and fast, so try not to do too much just because I have a composite video. And so now I'm going to try again to work on any areas that are dry. I'm going to add in the wolf gray, and a good way to check to see if something's dry is just to kind of dab your finger over it and see. If you move your finger across it, you might smudge it if it's wet. So I think this body area is the driest. And so I'll start there. A little bit of the black color. And I want it to go a little bit gray, so I want it to be wet and light. So I'm gonna add the gray color in. And again, I'm gonna start with, you can check it on here, it looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit darker. because this wolf is pretty dark. And just start adding it in. That was dry, so I went ahead and started adding it. And since we aren't adding a lot of water to our paper and we're putting the water in, mixing the water on our palette, it makes it so it's a little faster to paint. Just kind of adding it, not worrying if I get it wrong, just kind of adding it in to areas that are this darker gray. And we 
adding more of the blackish gray color in too. It's good to have a few layers of different colors. And so just quickly adding this in. Again, it looks kind of crazy right now, I'll tell you the truth. And there's always a long, ugly stage when you're creating paintings, I think. And you don't want to get too carried away because we're just going to finish a lot of this with ink lines. So just kind of mapping in some colors. Some gray areas as needed. And you want just want to make sure you preserve the other colors underneath a bit and don't add quite too much. This is usually more with watercolor. So lastly, I'm going to add a little bit of a darker, so let's take a little bit more gray in a line motion, just to add a little bit more of that defining fur. So kind of anything that really is defining, like this area by the leg seems defining to me. Some of the um, hair here, the head seems very defining kind of add some dark areas in there. This looks really defining to me, the hair. And some of these hairs on the back, a few here, just kind of sparingly throughout. So you don't want to add too much, just a little bit here and there. And try to make sure it moves in the direction of the hair. And pick up more whenever you need it. And again, this is not exact, just getting an idea of this wolf. Quickly getting some darker areas in, just some real defining dark areas, and some hairlines. So we're going to add in a few more with a lot more with our pen. area on the face is very dark, so I want to make sure I get that in as well. And again, I'm moving my brush in the direction of the hair. a few more so I don't want to get too carried away. A lot through the back. It's a little darker all through here. And not being exact at all, just really, really, really roughly getting this in there. Seems cut, placing it in real quick. But anything that's super dark and should have that darker gray color. And 
overall, I think that that looks about right. It's just a quick representation. So I'm gonna let it dry and, and I'll start adding ink lines to any spots that dry first. So I'm gonna start with the 005 Black Micron and this is pretty much dry, but just to give it a little bit more time, I'm gonna write in the common name and scientific name and this might not work for you, but it may be best to add the observations if you're actually drawing from a live animal. Write any names or observations in afterwards. And I kind of like to start with the eye, and I'm going to use my About Me page to help me keep my hand from smudging anything that might still be a little damp. And I'm just going to start with the eye with this tiny pen so that I try to reduce the amount of errors. And I'm just going to add in similar kinds of lines that I added with my step-by-step. -step. So not all the lines, not a lot of hairs, just a few here and there that might seem a little bit more defining than the others. And I'm just going to go through and redraw the lines and redefine all the lines with this small micron pen not getting too carried away. Just doing a quick representation. So don't take too long going through and adding those. But if you need to add some hairlines instead of straight lines, you can do that. So I think I've added all the 005 black micron lines I need to add. So I'm going to add some 01 lines, just some, any areas that I feel like just need a little bit thickening, like maybe the nose here, add some line, a little bit darkening area in there. Uh, maybe right here. Um, anything that looks just slight, a little thicker, but not super, Maybe some of the hairlines, just kind of thicken some of those in. I do have one more micron. I'm going to add an even, even darker line in. So this is kind of the in between. Really great in this case for the hairlines and the areas that need a little bit of a thickening. And a little bit more. Again, not getting super exact at this, just kind of getting some in. Take too much time on this. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Maybe just define the back side of the head just a little bit more. And I think maybe just a few of the lines on the face because this wolf's face is pretty dark and I didn't actually darken it that as much as it actually is. I'm going to add a few more hair lines in there just to represent that real quick. So I'm going to add some oh, weight lines and this should be pretty minimal just to make a few of the really defining areas stand out. So here for the head, maybe here where the mane ends, um, this part leg, and this will give good amount of contrast to really make this image pop a bit. This back of this leg, this front leg can be outlined a bit to make it all pop a bit more. And by leaving the hind leg a lighter line mark, it makes it so this front part pops out, kind of like when you look at something, it gets a little bit lighter 
the background. A little bit more defined lines for the foreground. And then here, between the back of the leg here and the tail, kind of defining that, adding some fine lines to the tail here. And then in the back, it's just a lot darker in some of these lines, so I can even add some dark hair lines in here to mimic that. And it has kind of, or she has, I'm not quite sure, I think I would lean towards it being a male. Um, and add some few hairlines here, just for consistency. And then there are some kind of along the back here. And like I said, it's just a sketch. I'm not gonna get too carried away with anything. I might just leave it right about like that. I'm gonna define just a couple things. way it pops and you see I should have had this over my image because it did smudge some of that ink a little bit so it's very important to be careful of that and I'm going to write in the common name again using my paper to protect my image from smudging just to make that pop a little bit more too so I like where this is at, so I'm done. But if you like, you can add more paint or more ink, but it's good to practice to try to get this done as fast as possible, but you can of course take as much time as you need as well. You can paint from a still image if that's more comfortable for you, but I highly recommend trying to do it from a moving image. The more practice you get, the better you will get. Great job observing your world and keep practicing. Thank you for joining me. Hope you had a chance to relax, hopefully outside in nature and observe a wolf today. If you like this video, please click the like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Make sure to check out Nature Sketch Crate for future lesson crates and to sign up for our newsletter for regular updates.